let's go through some of the key ideas in an incredibly important theorem in abstract algebra. Cayley's theorem states that every single group, no matter what, is always isomorphic to a group of permutations. Now, I want to stress something before we go in. This doesn't say that it's isomorphic to S5 or Sn for some n. In fact, it doesn't necessarily have to be a finite group of permutations because some groups are infinite. So, what we're going to do is we're going to actually use the group itself to construct a group of permutations. And how we do this, let's go ahead and we'll start, we'll let G be any group. So, for any element of that group, we're going to define a function t sub g that's going to map g to g by tg of x, so x would be a group element, is equal to g x using the group operation. So first thing to notice is that tg is a permutation. Permutation is defined to be, it's a function that's one-to-one -one and onto, from something to itself. So we need to show that this tg is both one-to-one -one and onto. Well, is it one-to-one? -one? Well, let's suppose tg of x equals tg of y for group elements x and y. That would mean that gx would have to equal gy. And then we can just use left cancellation, x equals y. There we go. It's one-to-one. -one. Is it onto? Well, now let's say that y is an element of the codomain g. Then I'm going to say that, of course, g inverse y is also an element of g because g is closed under inverses and the group operation. But tg of g inverse y would be g times g inverse y would of course be y. So for any y in g, we found an element of g that tg maps to it, therefore it's onto. So for any g in the group, tg is a permutation. So I'm going to say that g bar make that equal to the set of all tg such that g is in g I'm going to claim that this is a group of permutations under the operation of function computation. I'm not going to go ahead and actually verify that this is a group. You can go ahead and look at the theorem proof in the book. But let's instead focus then, I claim that G is isomorphic to g bar through the operation b of g is equal to tg, fairly obvious one. So once again, I need to show that this is now one-to-one -one and onto. We've proved that each individual tg is a one-to-one -one and onto thing, but now we're trying to show that the isomorphism is one-to-one -one and onto. Well, let's suppose that b of g was equal to b of h, so tg is equal to th. Now remember that tg and th are functions, though. And for functions to be equal, they have to map every single element in the domain to the same thing. So specifically, tg of e has to equal tg th of e. 
That would mean that g times e would have to equal h times e. That would mean that g is equal to h, and there we go. So if phi of g equals phi of h, g must equal h, this is in fact one to one. We also need to show it's on to. So, well, we could go through that, but to be perfectly honest, the way we've constructed this, if Tg is an element of G bar, that came from G is an element of G, and certainly then phi of G is equal to Tg, so it has to be onto. Finally, we need to show that this thing has our homomorphism property. So, what if we had phi of gh, that's equal to tgh. Now that's a function. That's a function that maps any element of g to gh times that group element. But pretty simply, that's going to equal tg composed with th. Multiplying on the left by gh is the same thing as multiplying on the left by h, then multiplying on the left by g. And there we go. So that's phi of g composed with phi of h. Phi of gh equals phi of g phi of h. And so it does have the whole Morrison property. So there we go. Every single group we constructed from that group a set of functions, a set of permutations of the group, and shown that we've got a natural isomorphism between them. Honestly, it isn't so much the theorem itself here that's important as this construction. The fact that we can take a group element, make a permutation out of it, that idea is very important and actually comes up on a fairly regular basis.